I like the MGTOW movement. Um, I've got to admit, the, the first thing is it has different layers or different levels or different beliefs and heads in multiple directions um, because it gives a version of different communities within a community. Um, because some people actually just have enough and decide to be 100% on their own. Other people are trying to find a way to have a normal relationship and find somebody that's compatible with that. <laughs> you know, and I'll just stress compatible with a normal relationship, which mm, more in a traditional sense. Others are quite simply not sure how to deal with relationships and dealing with people and dealing with women and etc. I get it. I get it. At the, the end of the day, I have a very little interest in a lot of women out there these days. And I, th I think the risks relate, relating to assets and getting burned and stuff make it very difficult for a lot of guys to start again. You know, at the end of the day, if you invest in a house and stuff and then lose half the house or all the house, plus, as some guys have pointed out, some of their pension as well, even though their wife has got no reason to not be working themselves, I get it. At the end of the day, um, you've got to protect your assets because at the end of the day, if you don't, everybody's in there. They're going to thank you very much. We'll take that from you. Marriage failed. It's payday. Lawyer payday. Um, so I like it because, let's face it, if there wasn't MGTOW, who else helps in those environments? Um, where's the support groups? I know when I was uh, surveying Brixton Prison, when you go in a wing, oh, these are old, I think they're, Vic yeah, they're Victorian, I don't think they're Edwardian. Um, on the wings, you've got all the cells, and then the, the ones on the ground floor are all the different support groups for drugs, for this, for that, for this. And you're thinking, hey, it's like a mini shopping mall of, of help. Um, but as a man, it's just like grim and bear it, uh, stiff up a lip, just get on with it, just put up with it. And I didn't realize how bad it was until I was doing some locksmithing a few years back and I seen it with a friend of mine, I'm not gonna mention his name. He had some real problems with his wife. He wasn't with her very long, but she took the house. Um, the house had to be sold. He'd actually got a deposit off his dad uh, to get the house, so by the time he'd given his, his I don't think, it, uh, I'm not, yeah. She ended up with a lump sum. He ended up giving most of the money he'd paid into the house back to his dad because she he paid the deposit and I don't think it came out with anything. Uh, yet she paid nothing into it. On top of that, he then had to pay um, child support and he's still paying that now. But he, yeah, he was pretty much destroyed on that point because there was no way to move forward. Financially, he couldn't buy another house. Financially, he couldn't support himself beyond a menial bedsit, which is smaller than a studio flat. It's not a studio flat. It's not much, about the size of my office. You know, I'm not being funny. My office is not big, but it, you've got space for a bed. You've got a sink, and then you've got like a little, what they call a baby belling cooker on it. And he was living in one of those. That's that's all he could afford. Um, and he's met a lovely Polish woman now, and they're happily married and everything else, and were, his fortunes changed. But for about a decade, he was living in, in this crappy lifestyle because his wife had had a mental breakdown, and he ended up paying for it because um, she did have a mental breakdown, and it did cost him because obviously it doesn't cost the state nothing. Um, and then I met another guy. He got locked out um, of his of his bed sit. Come, he called me up because I, I was doing locksmithing. I opened his door, and they did the same. These little prisons, little prisons in the UK. And I know while I was talking to him when I was picking his lock open, his wife's living in their three bedroom house. 
um, with the kids and the uh, boyfriends living there as well. And I just thought, this is utter madness. And I'll give you another example. My other house, uh, sorry, my house used to have a basement plat flat underneath it. Um, because you, there was a little alleyway with an arch, and you go down, and then there's another apartment under it, and we, we had the, the larger house above. Um, I'm not sure if it used to be the old servants' quarters or whatever, but anyway, there was a friend of mine that moved in there. Um, well, he became my friend after he moved in there. He was a turf accountant, uh, which is basically he does all the bets because he's math he's brilliant with mathematics. Before that, he worked for Codemasters, you know, the computer game programmer. He, he was actually did the graphics design for Colin McRae Rally, he, you know, quite a quite a big selling game. And he's got all these discs and stuff from this stuff he achieved while working there. He used to get beaten by his wife because um, it was just like we were sat chatting the one day, and he was talking about. How, how he ended up there because he used to I think it was in the island I'm, I'm not sure where the Codemasters big office is but I think it was island she used to beat him and she kept the house and the three kids got the boyfriend moving in there as well and then he started looking at why am I working I've got this good salary but it's all going to her and her boyfriend that live in my house so he quit and he moved to where he was now and took the house. Yeah, I'll tell you how much it was. Um, I think it was just over £3,000 a month he had to pay his ex-partner. A lot of guys don't even earn three k in the in the UK. My other friend was only earning twelve k a year before tax back then. Um, but anyway, so the point being is he's living in this small apartment, one bedroom, got a kitchen, small sitting room and reasonably sized bedroom he go, goes no it wasn't it was before he went on holiday that was it so he, the one day he comes home and gets his pay slip and he says Matt can you have a look at this I said well what, what is it he says look it's my pay £412 all his wages had been taken by the CSA child support agency Left him with four hundred and twelve. His rent was four pound, uh, four hundred. So it leaves him twelve pounds to pay his gas, electric, and all the food and everything for the month. And what they've done is the brother, because it was actually on this, had the assessment that when he left, because he hadn't, he hadn't had any work, because obviously he had to find work during this time period of transition. They still clocked up the three thousand a month. So now they're saying that he owed. Um, three nine thousand pounds plus the three thousand because it's still got to go to court to be reevaluated. Because even when it gets reevaluated, you're still waiting anyway. So if you had had a like you got made redundant and you filed for the court to update that, you'd have to wait to your court date, and the expectation could be three months. So if you're paying three months, even though you earn nothing during that three months, they would still want the £9,000 that you never earned. That's the way it's been set up. So he said, look, well, it's not even worth working now. Um, so what he did, his, his daughter, not his daughter, his sister, could see he was feeling a bit run down and upset. So she paid for him to go on holiday and they went to Spain for a fortnight. Oh, sorry, it was a week. And uh, he come back and he said, Matt, I met this German guy on the beach. Um, he he offered me a job. I've got to submit all my CV and stuff because it was for a betting bar. So he did all the bets on the bar. Um, and I'm going, I'm going to move over to Spain. I thought, yeah, that's great, that's great. So he then piled all his stuff in his car. The German guy gave him the job. He drove into Spain. And then I seen him probably about four or six months later just walking along the road because I was just walking um, to my ex-partner's parents house at the time and he says Matt I've just arrived today and it's raining he says but when I got to the airport because I said to him well why, why are you back and he says 
because he had moved over to Spain now, is there. Uh, when I got out the Birmingham airport, the doors went open, I could see the rain, and that's exactly what I thought. Why am I back? He come to see his friends he hadn't seen for for ages. Re- realized how miserable everybody was, um, and that's what we were just saying. It's like, why are you here? And it's like, yeah, I know, I won't be coming back again. And he went. And the point being is, they couldn't chase his money in Spain. And this is the thing: the system is set to take your cash. You are the breadwinner. You are the prisoner. You are tied into this. And I can understand why MGTOW is getting a lot of following from people from different age groups. Because I have noticed there's a focus on people saying all these sad, whining, blah, 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 guys that have had bad relationships. There's a lot of younger people involved because they're recognizing the same problems before they even get into them. Um, So from my point of view, I think MGTOW is important because the community is actually growing and I see that myself all over YouTube and the fact is I didn't even know what MGTOW was probably a year ago um, and the good thing is it has many layers it has something to uh, sue it all and is not driven by you must do this you must do that because you can fit into your own niche within MGTOW so if you are a 20-something that's struggling to get in a relationship and not really sure how to do things, you know, there is people there that you can talk to. Um, I do understand how a lot of guys would not want to get in a relationship whatsoever now. But this is the Philippines channel. That's what it started with. Um, if you're a 20-something, can work online or do something and set yourself up with a minimum a minimum I would recommend is about 600 pounds a month um, because we take into account medical insurance I would say go and spend six months in the Philippines go and do something completely out of your comfort zone I'll tell you what you'll find women left right and center just don't lock yourselves into a marriage <laughs> just too young too young to make that decision um you're still because because i'll tell you what if you marry young you divorce young in the philippines they marry and divorce young that's why a lot of people have a well they don't divorce they separate which is where a lot of problems occur because when somebody gets married wants to take the wife back to well wants to get married and then take their partner back to the west they've got to get the marriage dissolved insolved yeah um which can be done but it's not it's not a straightforward process a lot of the time um so the point being is just go there meet people um and just just be happy and at the end of the day i did it in my 30s and i wish i'd done it in my 20s i'll tell you that now i'd have done a lot more i'd have spent a lot more time there i'd have traveled a lot more i'd have gone into Indonesia and other places and traveled around a bit more. Um, but the thing I've had when I went out the Philippines, I already had a commitment because I have a daughter in the UK. So I've already committed um, from a responsibility point of view. But a lot of guys I know out there need something to steer them in the right direction. And I'll tell you what, once you have been in an environment that recognizes you as having a worth it's also a good confidence boost and the reason i say this is i know what some of these guys are facing because when you get pushed down and suppressed is not being handsome enough i mean what i get here it's like oh man you balding fat old man thing and it's like i don't know what old is but i didn't think it was 40s i didn't think old was in the 40s um so yeah you know i get it i don't care you know at the end of the day i'm happily living my life in spain got a beautiful wife great kids swimming pool on tap tennis court sun shining outside gonna have a barbecue this afternoon i don't care somebody shouts yeah you know what get life experiences 
you get that, you'll start seeing everything drop into place anyway. Get your confidence up. Um, and I do recommend that. For anybody who's got a bit of cash, go there, experience stuff. If you need an apartment, I've got one available at the moment because uh, we've actually got somebody moving in to another apartment on the third. Um, but the advantage you've got there is you're with several other foreign guys as well, um, which means you, you're not isolated. But anyway, I've now babbled on a bit, but I do like the MGTOW movement. I do think it's important. I do think it's important in recognizing that we are pushed back quite a lot. But at the same time, I think people like myself and some others out there, because we kick back the other way, um, it's it's worth giving support to more MGTOW people out there. Um, to recognize going your own way doesn't always mean that you have to be single. Going your own way should be more on independence in deciding your decisions for yourself and not being boxed in um, to what is socially acceptable from a suppression point of view, from a social dynamic that's actually fake. Um, we see enough fake news to actually show that, so we don't even have to go into that in great detail. But anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video.